this hybrid event. Oops. Hold on one second. I press this. Um, welcome everyone to this um, hybrid event, trade related aspects of the goals and target system for the post 2020 global biodiversity framework. My name is Lika and I am from the Biotrade Initiative at UNCTAD. And first of all, I just have to say that I am so very happy that after two years, we are finally able to have these meetings in person. Um, I would like to give a warm welcome to everyone who is here um, in person today um, and welcome to Geneva. Um, I'm also very delighted to see many faces um, and uh, many of you joining from all, the, all over the world through Zoom. Um, a warm welcome to all of you and thank you for joining as well. Um, before we start, I have a few um, quick housekeeping rules and some announcements. Um, first of all, um, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the new normal. Um, in which not only do we have participants in person and online, but we also have speakers in person and online as well. So it's gonna be a full hybrid um, experience for all of us today. Um, I myself am dealing with two computers and three screens. So apologies in advance if I'm, my focus is not correct or if I looked a, very, a bit confused, I'm just trying to, to work things out. So just bear with me for, on that. Um, if you are joining us online, except for the speakers, um, we would kind of like to ask all of you to keep your microphones turned off, also videos turned off, um, and to use the chat function for any questions or, or comments. Um, for those of you who are in person, um, if you could kindly wait on raising your hand or making any comments until after the speaker's presentations or interventions are finished. Um, just to let you know, we will also be here during the entirety of the CBD meetings. So if you have any in-depth questions or if you, have, if you want to have a talk with us, we'll be happy to have a, have a chat with you afterwards as well. Um, and lastly, um, it already started, but we're just letting you know that we're recording this session, um, which will be shared afterwards, and we'll be sharing the slides afterwards online as well. Um, so now that's out of the way, um, I just want to reiterate my appreciation and gratitude to welcome all of you um, who is joining here today, whether in person or virtual. Um, this workshop is organized by UNCTAD and the International Trade Center, ITC, with the support of the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO. Um, so with that, we're just gonna jump right into it. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Lorena Jaramillo from UNCTAD, who will be giving you a quick overview of what we will be discussing in this event. The floor is yours, Lorena. Hello, can you hear me? Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much, Lika. Uh, distinguished delegates, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone joining us personally and virtually. I am honored to be here and welcome you to this hybrid event jointly organized by UNCTAD and ITC with the support of the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO, under the Global Biotrade Program, linking trade, biodiversity, and sustainable development. Some of you may not be familiar uh, with UNCTAD, so please allow me to say a few words about our organization and its Biotrade Initiative, and of, as well as ITC. UNCTAD is the main organization within the United Nations that deals with trade and development. It helps developing countries participate more equitably in the global economy. UNCTAD's Biotrade Initiative launched in 1996, imagine 24, almost more than 25 years ago, has been offering a holistic approach to support countries to effectively address biodiversity loss by promoting sustainable trade and investment in biological resources in line with the objectives of the CBD. Under this initiative, um, we are also collaborating closely with ITC, the joint agency of, the, of UNCTAD and the World Trade Organization, with the mandate to support small businesses to become more competitive in international markets, such as through the adoption of sustainability practices into their business model. One example of this collaboration is the Biotrade self-assessment tool that we will be presenting to you afterwards. Um, so the, um, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development recognizes international trade as an engine for inclusive economic growth and poverty reduction, and that's an important means to achieve the sustainable development goals. Trade is an indispensable component of the global economy, which includes businesses, societies, and biodiversity. In fact, approximately 40% of the world economy is derived uh, from the direct use of biodiversity, ecosystems, and their services. While trade is an indirect driver to biodiversity loss, sustainable trade 
can be a part of the solution to the global biodiversity crisis. This is why trade policy and making trade sustainable are essential for the transformative change we need for reversing biodiversity loss and live in harmony with nature. Trade policy can help orient global trade patterns in a direction that contribute to the achievement of the CBD objectives. How can trade policy make a positive contribution to achieve the post-2020 global biodiversity framework? Let me share with you uh, four means that we have identified. First, it promotes and incentivizes sustainable use of biodiversity and generates income, wealth, and economic security for livelihoods. Second, it engages private sector actors, small, medium, and large enterprises in the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity and in the access and benefit sharing. Third, sustainable trade leverages additional financial resources and support mainstreaming of biodiversity. And lastly, number fourth, trade policy can support phasing out perverse incentives to biodiversity, such as fishing and fuel subsidies. The mainstreaming trade into the post-2020 global biodiversity framework is very important. The opportunity that trade brings to biodiversity conservation and sustainable use, and the generation of livelihoods that depend on it outweighs the challenges, and we believe it's worth trying. So today, we will explore the role of sustainable trade could take within the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and its implementation. Among CBD parties and trade and biodiversity experts, we will discuss the important role of legal and sustainable trade and how trade can be integrated and contribute to the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Uh, concretely, we will present the outcome of two workshops uh, organized by UNCTAD and its partners last year. We will show the different ways of how trade, particularly legal and sustainable, can support the new framework, as well as effective tools and mechanisms that can shift the impact of global economic drivers on biodiversity towards sustainably managing and conserving ecosystems. We're also excited to introduce two tools that have been developed to support the post-20 global biodiversity framework. First, the UNTAD ITC Biotrace Self-Assessment Tool that can be used by companies to benchmark their operations against our biotrade principles and criteria, which are a set of social, environmental, and economic sustainability criteria. And then the second that we're also happy to launch here is the trade and biodiversity statistical tool that was developed by UNCTAD and will provide users with data sets of trade flows of biodiversity-based goods. Ladies and gentlemen, in line with our mandate under the Bridgestone Convention, UNCTAD is committed to contributing to a successful post-2020 global biodiversity framework. The upcoming CBD uh, COP15 will be crucial not only for UNCTAD and its member state, but to the international community as well, as we all need to work together and adopt a successful framework. Let me end by thanking all of you for your time and interest in taking part in today's event. Again, my deepest gratitude to SECO for their continued support to Biotrade all these years. I look forward to a fruitful and inspiring exchange today, and I encourage you to participate actively and continue engaging with UNCTAD Biotrade and its partners for a successful conclusion of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework process. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lorena, for laying out the foundation what we will be discussing today. Um, as Lorena just mentioned, we organized two online workshops last year to discuss on this very issue of trade and biodiversity. We had over 200 participants attending these sessions. Um, so let us hear a little bit more on what was discussed during these meetings and what things we can draw out of in terms of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Um, for this, we have our biodiversity consultant, Andreas, who is joining us virtually. Um, Andreas, are you there? Yes, I hope you can see me and hear me. Yes, we can perfectly. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Lita, and thank you very much also, Lorena, for your introduction. I'm very happy to present the results of two workshops we organized last year on uh, related to the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. One, the first of these workshops was almost a year ago. Can you imagine? It was 21st of March uh, 2021. And many of uh, you also here in the audience were at the workshop and helped us making it successful. So um, it's really nice to see you all here. Um, I think that both workshops, um, next slide, please. Um, both workshops had, I think, this, the, a similar um, objective, which was to discuss the role of trade in the GBF. And 
In both workshops, we brought together um, stakeholders from governments, from businesses, from international organizations, NGOs. Um, so we, in both workshops, we had quite a broad group of people to discuss um, how trade relates to biodiversity. Um, we, in both workshops, we had quite interactive discussions and uh, along um, uh, with guiding questions. And um, the results of both workshops have been compiled in uh, two reports, which uh, I think we can share the link, the links in the chat quite soon. I have them ready. Um, so uh, I think both workshops were very insightful. And let me now jump to the results of those, uh, these workshops. Um, next slide, please. Um, but let me, let me first start with three assumptions. In the 2030 agenda, trade is explicitly recognized as an engine for inclusive economic growth and poverty reduction. So trade is clearly essential for economic development and poverty eradication, but it also contributes to other sustainable development goals in various areas. But in order to play this role, environmental policies need to be uh, respected in trade or the trade needs to be biodiversity friendly. So that is um, the first assumption. Then also um, we see that many drivers of biodiversity loss can only be addressed with sustainable use and sustainable management, which is also an objective of the CBD. So, um, trade of goods and services derived from biodiversity can create income opportunities and incentives for sustainable production. Then we also saw in the IPES global assessment um, that trade, of course, is an indirect driver of biodiversity loss. Um, but also trade is an important factor in solving sustainability challenges. Therefore, trade considerations need to be part of the GBF for the GBF to be successful. And the GBF also should help us with the shift to sustainable biodiversity friendly trade. So we have these two, two angles. Um, next slide, please. So the big question, of course, is also how to make um, trade biodiversity friendly. Um, so what, what was also mentioned that, um, especially at the first workshop, the March workshop, is that um, the multilateral trade system and bilateral trade agreements and domestic norms and regulations are very important for, um, to move towards sustainability. But in um, our workshops, we focused on the aspects which could be covered by the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and lies also in the area of specific expertise of biotrade and um, the partners in organizing the workshop. Um, here on this slide, you see in the context of the second workshops where we worked together with ICL Alliance and um, uh, the United Nations Forum for Sustainability Standards. Um, so in, in this workshop, we found that we have to look at, at the entire supply chains from pure producers to consumers. And um, sustainable su supply chains deliver benefits um, which are equally distributed also among the different stakeholders in the supply chains from producers up to the um, consumers and also across regions, continents, countries. So this supply chain links is very important when we talk um, about, uh, of course, sustainable trade, um, which is also part of the first draft of the GBS. Uh, GBS. So we see that um, what we need to achieve is that stakeholders along the uh, supply chains apply biodiversity friendly practices and establish also, um, and this leads also to the establishment of good practices in a whole sector. So um, sustainable trade also means that ABS rules and rights of um, IPLCs are respected. So um, now maybe uh, I should have said that earlier what uh, voluntary sustainability standards are. I think we have experts here in the room, but let me give it, give it a try. Um, so those are norms and standards that are used to ensure that the product is harvested, produced, processed, or transported in accordance with certain sustainability metrics. 
such as environmental impact. And um, these voluntary sustainability standards, they provide incentives to companies and producers to adopt practices that are in line with environmental, social and economic objectives. So you can already see how important these voluntary sustainability standards can be for mainstreaming biodiversity effectively. I think they are a concrete example how to achieve effective mainstreaming and really get, get biodiversity to different um, sectors. Today, there are hundreds of voluntary sustainability standards, and so far only um, a limited number of them focus on biodiversity. So the GBF could help us also strengthening the biodiversity angle in VSS. Now, um, uh, Biotrade, of course, uh, the Biotrade Initiative <clears throat> is um, somehow the guardian of the, the Biotrade's um, principles and criteria. Um, which um, by trade is not a voluntary sustainability standard per se, but is understood as activities related to the collection or production, transformation and commercialization of goods and services derived from biodiversity. Um, following environmental, social and econo economic sustainability criteria. Do you see these criteria here on the right side of, this, uh, of the um, slide? And they can help get, um, guiding businesses and governments in making trade more sustainable. So I encourage you at look at, um, to have a look at them. It's a quite a neat brochure, which is also linked on the site event web page. Um, next slide, please. So I illustrated what is important for sustainable trade and the role trade has um, for the three of the objectives of the CPD. And it is proudly recognized that the private sector has an important role to play in implementing the GBF. Um, so um, the, the GBF will need to be implemented, of course, from the global to the local level. And uh, to do that, we need new narratives. We developed such narratives also in the two workshops. Um, we argue that trade is one of the factors um, that links strongly to local producers to global companies. So bringing all these levels together um, and also includes, of course, local communities and also cities. So it's um, the uh, trade narratives, they are linking all these levels together. Um, yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, this is really a huge mainstreaming opportunity and it's also necessary um, for, for uh, effective implementation of the GPF. Um, Next slide, please. Now, this a bit complicated slide, which will be hard for you to see, is based on an, an analysis that we did how uh, the trade aspect could be strengthened in the development of the GPS. This is the left column, and how the bio trade um, or trade actors can contribute to the implementation of the GPS. So, we see entry points throughout the first draft. And we hope that at this meeting here in Geneva, um, that these elements will be strengthened. I, I don't think I have the time to go through the, here, but let me in the next slide, please. Um, let me highlight a few points where, I, where we, we thought that specific attention could be given to ensure that entry points, points for trade actors remain in the GBF. So um, what we, we, we saw is that target five is of course very important because it includes the trade of wild species. But as we um, deliberated in our workshops, we, um, we, have, um, we need trade in general to be addressed. So we um, would recommend to remove the word wild um, so that the scope of the target would encompass a broader list of products um, such as as, um, products produced um, following um, bio trade or other voluntary sustainability standards. Then um, we also um, recommend to support targets 15, 14 and 15, the draft targets, because they address all economic sectors and explicitly mention supply chains. And um, we also think that it would be helpful to have an explicit mention of trade uh, in the list of indirect 
um, drives of biodiversity loss in the section on enabling conditions. And also, um, we think it would be helpful if organizations such as uh, UNCTAD, but many others are also referred to in a, in a potential draft decision um, related to the GPF. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Yes, so that is already <laughs> the last the last one, and I, I think I used up all my ten minutes. But I could, I think uh, we have hopefully time to discuss it further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andres. Um, it's great to see that the workshop had um, plenty of rich discussions, um, but also a lot of inputs from different stakeholders as well. Um, mentioning of the specific trade targets were very helpful to us as well. Um, at this time, we probably have a time for maybe one or two questions. If anyone has um, questions from the floor um, or from the chats, um, please let us know. Hi, uh, hi everyone. I'm Stephanie, representing uh, One Planet Business for Biodiversity, OP2B. Um, I have actually two kind of questions, comments. Um, one is about on, on the kind of contribution that you are sharing today with regard to the GBF. To what extent have you liaised with Business for Nature and their, or their contribution? Because they are a strong business uh, partner in terms of having made some a clear recommendation uh, on the ambition of the framework and as well on target 15, which is really how businesses can uh, contribute and be one of the solution partner um, of the GBF, so on one side. And the other one related to specifically to that work that you've been doing, that you are sharing, okay, about practices, but how do you measure the impact? I mean, and I'm sure you, you will also use indicators that, will, that are under discuss, discussion within the post-2020 framework, but it, as a, as a food of anticipation, what have been your thinking? Uh, and here I want to share as well that uh, OP2B has been working on a regenerative agriculture leaflet to explain what could be reconsidered as agricultural practices that are regenerating uh, soil health and biodiversity in the farm. So just food for thought as well is practices on one side, but impact is the uh, intention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Andres, do you want to make any commentary? Yes, yes. And uh, thank you very much, Stephanie, also, uh, and also for referring to the BFM uh, submission, which I think is extremely helpful. Of course, our workshop was already a year ago, so long before the submission was made. And we, uh, um, uh, I don't know if you remember, but we were also in contact prior to this workshop. Um, Yes, so I think the, it is really complementary what we have been producing to uh, the submission, even that this, we were, uh, yeah, maybe time-wise much earlier. Um, so um, I think there is also the potential for, uh, yeah, for more exchange and cooperation in the future. Um, regarding, um, I think the metrics, what you mentioned, I think uh, we, we, we will come back later to that uh, in, in today's uh, site event. I think there will be more information what um, Biotrade has been doing, but of course we also made submission with some proposals for indicators which, uh, which we are working on. And uh, many of the Biotrade partners have their own um, um, proposals and, uh, uh, and also they are um, making efforts to in, improve the metrics. Just as a quick response, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. Just to compliment also Andreas, the partners, for example, like Elbeta, they're doing in the in the ground, they're also doing studies and seeing the impact of the biotrade principles and criteria on specific value chains and businesses. So that's also been done in the ground. We have also here with the Union for Ethical Biotrade that they have also the system of measuring the impact and they, they have also the biodiversity action plan. So it's important to say that biotrade, what well, you provided like a guideline, we have the partners that use that guideline and implement it in the ground. And then they are the ones that are measuring the impact. But there is experiences and work going on on that topic. Thanks. Okay. 
Uh, good afternoon. This is Rashati Tumir. I work at the University of Dhaka in Bangladesh. There are two issues that I want to flag. It may not be the appropriate time to really discuss it further. So one as a conceptual issue, which is financialization of nature, because how are you addressing that? Because that requires a serious understanding and advancement from UNCTAD for its mandate. Second point is how do you really bring trade and development and intersect with respect to three CBD objectives? And in doing so, how are you going to really enhance the real issues that are being faced by developing countries, both in, in terms of conservation, sustainable use, and benefit sharing. So how do you really enhance the capacity of the developing countries with benchmark indicators and others in practical terms? And the last point that I would really like to bring in, which is, in a sense, uh, how we see that there are attempts in terms of creating technical barriers to trade by certain parties in WTO negotiations. Uh, and environment is being as a technical barriers to trade and, and as also in terms of SPSS negotiations. So how UNCTAD is really helping developing countries in those areas. So are you dealing with it? And we can have further discussion on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Andres, um, I think we're running a little bit short on time. So maybe if you can have, if you have a one minute response to, to any of the comments that, um, that was made. Well, uh, thank you for the comments, but I, I think I can not really comment much on UNCTAD's policies. I think I'm not the right person to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, I'll take um, give you some examples. So for example, with UNTAD, um, how they created um, the Biotrade Initiative with support developing countries, implement the three objectives of the CBD. To do that, we have developed the Biotrade principles and criteria. Uh, we work normally with partners. For example, in here, we have the Ministry of Environment and Water in Ecuador. And they, uh, with them, we help them develop a methodology, uh, develop sector strategies, and help and work with them together to develop companies, implement the biotrade principles and criteria. So we translated the three objectives of the CBD to uh, criteria and then to indicators that are being implemented by, by partners, uh, sometimes government, sometimes NGOs, business associations, and they accompany the, uh, the companies in developing of the sectors. Um, other things on the WTO, you know, right now there's also all these discussions about the trade and environmental sustainability structure discussions uh, that are happening right now at the WTO. There's also the discussions on pol um, plastic pollution and peace subsidies. Um, and we are also contributing to that process and trying to mainstream right now the, um, the discussions of uh, and experiences of um, sustainable trade, sustainable use of biodiversity as an engine to development. And even tomorrow, I might take an advertisement. Tomorrow, there's gonna be a side event organized by UNEP um, and the Trade Hub. And they're gonna, we're gonna be talking about exactly the, the discussions of WTO and biodiversity. Maybe I can share also with you the link. So we're just gonna focus on that topic tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think at this time, we're gonna move on to the next one. If um, I see some questions in the chat, um, we will be happy to answer them during the, um, our experts are going to be answering them during the, the session or maybe after. So, um, yep. Um, so let us move on to, the, to our next panelist. And this, um, what Andres mentioned about the VSS and the principles and criteria is a perfect segue to our next speaker. Um, so ITC and UNCTAD have collaborated together to create a new tool um, that will be useful for companies. Um, and uh, my colleague from ITC, Anna Battaglione, is here to tell us more about it. So, Anna, you have the floor. Uh, 
Um, thank you, everyone, and good afternoon, or good morning, good, good evening, depending where you are. So I'm uh, working at ITC, International Trade Center, which is also based in Geneva. It's the joint agency of UNCTAD and WTO. And uh, under the framework of the Global Biotrade Program financed by SECO, ITC has developed with uh, UNCTAD a uh, tool, an online tool that is free of charge and is available in different languages that enable um, businesses, but also stakeholders that are supporting small businesses in developing countries or anywhere else to uh, understand what biotrade is about, what are the biotrade principles and criteria, and how to implement them. So what does it take to actually become compliant with them? So that's a tool um, that we have been developing over the past years that is already launched and being piloted in different uh, countries um, that really has the capacity to support the implementation of um, the post-2020 uh, global framework when it comes to uh, raising awareness about sustainable management of biodiversity-based value chains through the biotrade principles and criteria, and also getting a very practical uh, insight of uh, how a company performs when they compare themselves with a biotrade principle and criteria. So this tool is hosted under the link that you can see uh, in the slide, um, Sustainability Gateway Biotrade. And um, it allows users to uh, run a diagnostic, a self-assessment questionnaire with the aim to obtain a diagnostic report at the end of the self-assessment. This self-assessment is mainly based on questions that are um, were prepared, um, taking into account the biotrade principles and criteria. And because we understand there are many value chains uh, on which uh, the principles and criteria are applicable, we also have fragmented or made um, customized self-assessments for different sectors. And this is mainly what you see um, in my slide, uh, the different sectors that the tool is available. And basically as a user, when I go to this link, I can uh, start exploring that specific uh, principles and criteria for a defined sector. Um, and that's mainly um, not only learning about the overview of it. So what is this about? Who created? What is the background? What are the sectors covered? What are the requirements, uh, sustainability requirements? Um, also how to comply what is the governance structure of uh, this biotrade principle and criteria and more contact information. And this is just one of the, um, let's say the features of the self-assessment tool. So the first one is really to sensitize the user about the principle and criteria. And the second feature is really to run a self-assessment questionnaire. So as a business, um, if I'm interested to become compliant with a specific, uh, yeah, with the biotrade principles and criteria for my sector, I can use this tool to get a first understanding of what does it take, yeah? So how far I am uh, as a business uh, when it comes to my sustainability performance. And uh, so users, they also have the possibility to start the self-assessment. And for that, they need to create an account uh, because all information um, inputted by the user, by the company, can be retrieved by them. So it's mainly if we try to relate to platforms that we're quite used, we can think of uh, some kind of a LinkedIn or Facebook. So you create a profile, you input all information about your company, your business, your geolocation, your production practices, any media. So you really customize your profile as you want. And here you can see an example how it looks like. And this profile uh, becomes available. So this is also, um, you can find these profiles at ITC Sustainability Map, but also under um, the landing page of the self-assessment tool, which uh, definitely I'll be sharing with you the slides. So you can also um, explore yourself the, the tool. And um, once I have an account, I can start uh, running a self-assessment. And uh, as I mentioned, these are uh, questions taken uh, based on the assessment of the principles and criteria. 
and they are customized per sector. So the example you see in the screen is about marine food sectors. And uh, the user pretty much needs to go through different questions that cover mainly five areas, uh, environment, social, management, quality, and ethics. And at the end of this journey of answering the questions, um, he gets to a diagnostic report, mainly uh, that benchmarks your question, your answers, so your self-assessment, which is the first column you see here, your answers, and um, the specific uh, biotrade principle and criteria for the sector you've chosen. So um, this tool, um, well, it's free of charge, so anyone can use it. And also, uh, it's quite interesting for um, the government. So when you have a project, uh, and here I use my country as an example, I'm from Brazil. So if myself as a representative of Ministry of Environment, and if I'm running a project, starting a new project with biodiversity-based value chains, or also with other value chains that have a strong component related to nature, I can use the tool uh, as a baseline. Um, so at the beginning of a project, if companies part of my project, they, they go through the self-assessment and they receive this diagnostic report, which can also be retrieved and downloaded in Excel, um, I can use that as an initial benchmark, a baseline for um, any activity that I may decide doing in my project. And the beauty of it is uh, it also includes the fact that once you have a profile as a company, you can always go back you can always redo your self-assessment. So you can also, as a business owner, you can compare your own performance across different timeframes. Um, and um, well, all information is available in English, but also there is the feature to translate it to other languages. So it's really an interesting tool that um, ourselves know, like we're quite proud of it. And also we are uh, available also to um, deliver dedicated workshops on it uh, because naturally my presentation is only a 10 minute presentation. And um, what we also do uh, is um, empowering like stakeholders to be able to utilize and navigate the tool into their own contexts. So um, here you have an overview of actually how you can um, save the information. And since this is stored in ITC's uh, platforms, also related to sustainability standards, users of this tool, they can also run self-assessments um, um, of other standards. Actually, there are over 300 standards available in ITC sustainability map. So as a user, I cannot only uh, self-assess myself regarding the biotrade principles and criteria, but I can also run the same self-assessment uh, that is customized for other standards. Um, and last but not least, um, I also wanted to mention that under the same link that I started uh, my presentation uh, on, the Sustainability Gateway uh, Biotrade, you can also find um, other features, other information related to uh, Biotrade, and uh, the work of the different partners of the Global Biotrade Program. There, are also, uh, there is also a library uh, with content, training materials, reports related to biotrade, um, also a network, uh, some kind of a map with different profiles of institutions that have been working on biotrade. And definitely this is the entry point of the self-assessment tool. So I'll stop my presentation here. Uh, and of course, uh, we are available for any questions regarding that and also for any future interactions um, to have a more customized overview about it. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for going through the, the tool and um, the step-by-steps on, on how we can use the tool. Um, I think we, we it took a lot of time for us to to do to to get this tool together, and I, as Anna said, we're very proud of it. So, um, please, um, on your spare time, please check it out. Um, if you're on on online on Zoom, um, if you can, if you have any questions, please ask in the chat, and um, Anna can get back to you. Otherwise, if you're here in person, um, Anna will be here um, until the very end. So please, um, you know, if, please feel free to come up um, and ask any questions that you may have. Um, yes, so in kind of um, for just for time's sake, um, we're just going to move on to the next part. 
Um, so at Biotrade, we have been working in close to 100 different countries with the support of our partners. And one of them is South Africa. And as you know, South, South Africa is a biodiversity hotspot um, and has been developing a lot of national policies and legislative, legislative framework um, for biodiversity. And today we have Prashanti Naker from the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries of South Africa on the line. Um, and we would like to, her to elaborate a little bit more on the work that she has been doing. And having been an active participant in both of our workshops, um, it will be very um, nice to hear some of her commentaries and her reflections on what was being discussed, um, complementing to what Andres has um, presented earlier. Um, so Prashanti, you have the floor. Are you there? Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, Lika and, and delegates across the world. I'm hoping that everybody can hear me. Yes, Wonderful. Well. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Chair, for the very warm welcome and introduction. Um, you've said it, I am Prashanti Naika from the Ministry of Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment uh, uh, in South Africa. And um, we are... Um, uh, what can I say, a very proud uh, ministry and department, especially since we, uh, our portfolio is based on um, a beautiful country, which only holds 2% of the world's land area, but based on our endemism, we are considered as the third most biodiverse country in the world. And uh, within this diversity, we have 7% of the world's reptiles, birds and mammals, 10% of the world's plants and 15% of the world's coastal and marine species. Uh, coupled with this incredible biodiversity, we also boast um, traditional or cultural diversity. And as the national government, we, uh, we consolidated efforts and uh, we are now moving forward with a biodiversity economy or a bioeconomy. Uh, bio so today I'm going to be talking to our efforts, the South African efforts in context of a biodiversity-based uh, trade. And I must thank the organizers for the opportunity to comprise uh, today's program. And um, just, just to give a high level summary, especially due to the time constraints, and I'm hoping that my, my input in today's session links up very nicely to the, um, to the high level summary of the past two workshops, as well as the self-assessment tool um, uh, shared by my colleague from uh, ITC. But from a South African co uh, context, um, I'd like to integrate our efforts in, 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 in pitching a closed loop model in, in terms of how we deal with biodiversity and trade. Um, for now, it's a three part uh, model um, where the first part is, uh, what can I say, is, um, giving you a summary of our past and our present efforts uh, in terms of safeguarding our biodiversity. And as national government, as well as with our other spheres of government, uh, this, the, this, the space of safeguard, the scope of it is quite broad. We look into policy, legislation, regulations, biodiversity management plans, um, and the likes. And then in just recent times, we also you know, brought together various stakeholders to work on the conservation and sustainable use of key species in our country. So um, that's our long history and current efforts in terms of you know, the safeguard guards that we've put in place for our biodiversity. But over time, you know, as national government, we flipped it over and we said, um, let's explore how we can support, um, especially our private sector and our businesses in the space of biodiversity. Because one of our recent studies revealed that our biodiversity sector actually generates over 400,000 jobs nationally. So in flipping it over, flipping a risk over, we conceptualize, like I said, the biodiversity economy. And um, that's when we, as a country, co-created uh, amongst all spheres of government, our national biodiversity economy strategy, where our scope of the strategy is biotrade, uh, wildlife economy, and ecotourism. But I'll specifically be talking to the biotrade side of things. Now we're on a new phase, and um, I'm, I'm quite excited to, to be uh, also a part of this new phase of this closed loop system. Uh, for biodiversity and trade in the sense that we are now saying 
we have a long history of putting safeguards in place and, and working with our stakeholders um, to be able to adhere or, or comply with these safeguards for the sustainability of our indigenous biodiversity across the country. But this new phase is saying, um, we want to grow the economy by 10% on an annual basis and, and promote transformation all the way down to grassroots level. And we've got a, a massive repository of, of safeguards for biodiversity. Um, so we said, in this new phase, we want to integrate efforts. Um, and this national integration is, is through um, our, um, what, what can I say, conceptualizing and implementing uh, a venture through our UNDP GIF 6 finance, where we are pitching a bi-trade standard and certification scheme. Um, integration in the sense that we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to build on our successes. We want to take off from uh, where the world is at um, and link with our partners globally and conceptualize a bi-trade standard and certification scheme so that we support our industry to be able to comply and increase uh, sustainable use, conservation and sustainable use of our biodiversity in these value chains. And, uh, and, and through the support, we, 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 want to, we, we anticipate a higher throughput of permit issuance in the country. And then closing that, uh, that type of support by through incentivizing our businesses in, the, in our biodiversity-based value chains. So I'm saying quite a bit, uh, many loops within this closed loop system, but ultimately it's a three stage system where we, uh, from a biodiversity safeguarding and value chains is, like I said, first part is having a, a comprehensive repository of safeguards policy and legislation for biodiversity. We flipped it over into an economic development strategy, and now we are in the stage of integration uh, from uh, an initiative led by national government where we are thinking of a biotrade standard and certification scheme. We are in the implementation phase and we're working with different markets to be able to come up with an initiative that is relevant to our local SMMEs, but is also uh, taking our ingredients globally uh, in a sustainable manner. So um, how can trade contribute to achieving the biodiversity uh, objectives of the global biodiversity framework? First and foremost, uh, when I look at, at the vision of our ministry and the vision of the uh, draft global biodiversity framework, we are 100% aligned. And that is a, a society living in harmony with nature. And, and in saying that, um, you know, we, we are going to, um, we have and we want to take our partnerships and our relationships uh, uh, a step forward and a step further, uh, especially with businesses, as well as the consumers uh, of products of trade. And uh, one example, like I said, uh, or means to be able to, to take our partnerships and our relationships forward with uh, businesses and the consumers is through our national biotrade standard and certification scheme. It does many things. Uh, especially in the context of our draft global biodiversity framework. Uh, firstly, uh, it can be a tool and a solution uh, for monitoring and implementation of the biodiversity framework, especially for biodiversity-based trade. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful method to be able to uh, have, um, what can I say, having everyone involved in this uh, initiative of sustainable trade and conservation. So, uh, as well as roping in our grassroots players, our providers of the resource, especially being a country uh, where we are providing and uh, value adding and using the resource. Um, and once again, it's a one-stop platform or initiative or mechanism or tool to integrate uh, efforts, especially from our long history of having or putting safeguards in place, whether it's legislation, uh, biodiversity management plans or best practice. And, 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 you know, what are our thoughts in terms of working with industry or businesses? It can be through an SMME level. Um, like if I have to link up with my colleagues uh, input from the ITC through the self-assessment, you know, uh, when, we, when we look at a value chain, it has many uh, legs or, or stages to a value chain. In context of biotrade, we, we in South Africa, we view it to have three legs at a macro level, the resource leg, 
the uh, processing leg and the final product leg of the value chain. So that's quite a, a comprehensive scope of work, especially since we are talking in the space of integration through a bi-trade standard and certification scheme. But we as a country have decided to take this on in a bite-sized approach. So for a start, we are going to focus on the resource segment of our value chain. And, and if you have to link that with the IDC self-assessment, this will you know, uh, be closely linked to the environmental side to things from a self-assessment. So um, this is an example, uh, a good example of partnership uh, uh, or, or working in a collaborative manner where we don't reinvent the wheel, but we we'll explore how we can link up with uh, existing initiatives. So um, this, is, this, is an, uh, this is just my thoughts in terms of our thinking and, and, and dovetailing in this space. But um, colleagues, that's, that's pretty much a summary, a high level summary of, of our, our efforts in terms of um, um, how trade can contribute to achieving biodiversity objectives for the draft global biodiversity framework. Um, it's, it's, it's an exciting time to be able to unpack this, especially since we are in phase nationally where we want to do integration and provide a, consolid a consolidated offering to our stakeholders, uh, especially business as well as our consumers uh, in our biodiversity-based value chains. Uh, thank you, Chair, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prashanti. Thank you very much for the comprehensive um, overview of, of um, of your commentaries and your thoughts. Um, and um, I like the part that you really emphasized the part about partnership. And I think that's very important uh, moving forward as we, as we move forward in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Um, I'm a little bit conscious of time. So at this time, I'm just going to ask if, um, if you're online to ask any questions in the chat. Um, if you have any questions in, in person, if you can ask us, we will be happy to relay them over to Prashanti. Um, thank you very much. Um, in the next part, um, I'm going to move over back to my colleagues. Um, so one of the things that um, has been discussed a lot in these CBD meetings is the importance of data, um, especially for the new biodiversity, uh, global biodiversity framework. And in response to this, UNGDAD has been developing a new innovative statistical trade database tool for biodiversity. Um, it's something we have been anticipating for a long time and long time in the works. Um, and I'm very happy to give the floor first to Lorena, who will be giving a brief overview, um, and then to a biodiversity expert, um, Julian, who will be showing you the details of the tool. Um, the floor is yours, Lorena, and I'll share this screen. Thank you, Thank you very much, Lika. So I will be very, very fast on the, giving you the background, uh, and then my colleague, uh, Julian, will give you a demo. So next slide. Uh, Okay, so the trade and biodiversity statistical tool, or how are we calling it, is a TRABIO. It was jointly developed by the Biotrade Initiative and the Development Statistic and Information Branch of UNTAD. Uh, we have the main objectives of this platform is to provide information on trade in biodiversity-based products, is to help better understand the significance of this trade, for example, uh, to help formulate or review policies related to biodiversity, uh, and trade aspects, and then uh, also support um, national, international policies and development process like the post 2020. The data, can you pass the next slide? Okay. Um, so the database comprises three elements. First, what we call the universe of uh, biodiversity based products, which includes a product list and a product classification where we divide the all the products that we have identified and can help the analysis. Then uh, the second component is a database where we have all the information about the trade flows of the biodiversity-based products, but we also have market and trade indicators that can be accessible. And then last but not least, we will have a visualization tool where you can have maps and graphs about, that's the one, uh, uh, maps about to help visualize the user visualize the database. So what do we have in the database? We have, it's based on the harmonized system. So a product classification developed by the World Custom Organization with the objective to track international traded goods. Uh, we are considering all products with biological origin. 
that come from land, from water, and for, from air. Uh, this classification help, uh, was defined by UNCTAD with the expertise that we're having, also extensive depth research, expert consultations, workshops. So we really try to reach out to find this, um, this database. We also saw, uh, have some considerations. So for example, the products that are intrinsically and integrally based on biological resources like cocoa beans, but also that use biological resources and ingredients or as an input like wooden furniture, or that are derived mainly from biological uh, resources-based products, like as glycerin from animal fats that we use in soap. Uh, we also exclude a lot of uh, products that are, were considered natural in the harmonized systems, such as metals or the extraction of minerals. After all these analyses, uh, we came up with a list of around 1,800 products that are included in the database. It's around 30% of the HS codes. Next slide. Uh, so imagine having all these analysis of 1800 ages codes, we group them into different categories and aggregated levels to make it easier for the analysis. Uh, we classify them according to the use, the importance of trade, to support ongoing process as the post 2020, where we have a specific um, subcategory on medicinal plants, because that's also one of the indicators I think is in goal B. And we, as much as possible, we build on existing work that was already done. So we have right now, uh, the database contains 13 groups, for example, live animals and plants, which contains 18 six subgroups like live animals, uh, then uh, further divided into 230 categories where we can see, for example, with example, fish, and then that which includes 79 subcategories and where you can have, for, for example, ornamental fish. So this is how this, the database is structured uh, and, uh, and you have access. So this is how to have access. It will be freely available, uh, updated annually and free available online to users to access the information. You have already the, next slide. You have already there the web link and it's under, data, under the data center, you will have the database. Uh, and where do we stand? So by summer, we, we will complete all the three components Right now we have the product list and product classifications. We will be doing updates and revisions based on experts and users feedback. Uh, we have the database that contains the trade flows and indicators. That is, I'm happy to announce that it will be available after this event. So you can actually go and see the database. And then you have interactive visualization tools that we're currently developing, hopefully by the end of uh, summer. And sorry, I rushed through the presentation, but I really want to give the floor to my colleague, Julian. Um, who has been working on this with the DSIB and to tell you an example of how the platform works. Thank you. Uh, my name is Julian Benda and I'm going to present the database component of the Trade and Biodiversity Statistical Tool. This database is a specialized database that covers trade in biodiversity-based products as they have been defined earlier by Lorena. Um, it contains bilateral trade flows for all these products. It's 1,814 subheadings, uh, which are not presented individually, but they're presented grouped together uh, according to the um, trade and biodiversity product classification that was um, developed for this purpose. Um, in addition to the product aggregates of the classification, 137 of these subheadings are though um, presented individually because they um, contain products that have been identified as prioritary by um, biotrade partners. So the coverage of the database is of all countries in the world, plus a number of relevant country aggregates. It contains annual data from 2010 to, um, at the moment, 2020. And uh, it covers all the products of the product classification, as well as the priorities of headings mentioned. It is updated yearly. And as mentioned, it's possible uh, to select country aggregates, such as geographical, political, economic aggregates. Um, there's predominantly two types of information contained in the database. The first being um, the bilateral trade flows, so imports and exports between the different countries. They're organized around five um, dimensions, being the reporting country or country aggregate, the partner with which it tra it's trading, 
uh, the product or product aggregate being traded, uh, the year in which the trade takes place, and the measurement unit, which in this case it's a uh, thousand US dollars. In addition to that, um, there's a number of trade indicators as well um, in order to convey additional information on the trade in biodiversity products, such as you can see um, trade balance, growth rates, product concentration index, and so forth. So looking at the uh, database itself, this is how it, it's presented. Um, these are a number of different uh, tables containing data and they relate to the different um, uh, parts of the of the database for instance the trade and in, 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 uh, the matrix of imports and exports uh, of all products the trade balance here trade and priority products and the other indicators so if we were to look at the first one which contains a set imports and exports for all the um, product aggregates of the product classification and this is how it, it shows. Um, it's a table here. You can see there are the different dimensions, product, year, um, flow, imports and exports, the reporting economy and the partner. So if we were to want to do an analysis, for instance, on a specific kind of product, um, <clears throat> here we can see that there are um, the, 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 pro the, the product aggregates of the product classification. Um, if I expand these selections, uh, you can see that they're divided into four different levels of aggregation, going from most aggregated on the left to uh, less aggregated on the right. So if we were to choose a specific um, type of product, for instance, let's say um, medicinal plants, which have been proposed by UNCTAD as a, a monitor for the monitoring framework of the global uh, biodiversity products, here we can select the, prod, uh, the medicinal plants product. Um, we can also restrict the analysis to um, specific economies, you can see here there's a number of, of these country aggregates that can be selected. Um, let's say we want to um, e check for the different um, individual economies. So we select those and then we click on show table <clears throat> and this is going to show the medicinal plants for, for all the economies. Here in the case it's nothing because the economy uh, uh, dimension is here outside um, what is going to be shown. So we can toggle this around in order to make it appear here and then we see we can move the product out of the way because there's only one anyway. And so we see here that there are the uh, exports of all the economies to the world in medicinal plants um, for these years. So we can also put additional dimensions here to show more information, for example, divide into exports and imports for all the economies. And then subsequently we can, uh, of course, uh, download this into um, several different formats. This can be, of course, done for all the different products, countries, years, and any selection that you might like. I'd like to take a short moment to present what kind of information can be taken out of the database. Um, uh, just with a click by selecting the, the right options here. For example, we have um, imports and exports of, as I said, med the medicinal plants for uh, the Latin America and the Caribbean region for this uh, the 2010-2020 time period. There's also the possibility to make a more in-depth analysis of exports and export growth rates on a yearly basis for, um, in this ca case, it's essential oils um, from the uh, priority subheading. So here we were able to um, to select specific subheadings rather than a product aggregate for the same time period. Um, the database allows really easily to um, create rankings. For example, the most exported um, the sectors with most exports for any regional or country. Um, for example, here for South Africa, we can see that in the in the last three years, the most exported sectors where uh, exports came from the food and beverage sector, from the wood sector, and so on. And similarly, also for um, for countries, we we can rank the countries in terms of the exports, of the imports, and and uh, uh, other um, other numbers. That's it for me. I hope that this short presentation could entice you a little bit on the analytical power of the database and I'm going to give the word back to Lorena. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.
Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Lauren, and also Julian um, for, for putting this presentation together. And also a big thanks to our Angtat Stats um, division, who is taking a long time and a very a long, long days and nights trying to put all this data together. Um, so please take a look. Um, if you're online, you can see the ch you can see the link in the chat. Um, we will, if you're here in person, we'll share it with all of you um, at the end of the session. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm just being very conscious of time. I know people are trying to rush to other things. So we're going to close here at this um, um, at this current moment. Um, if you have any questions, if you're here in person, please um, feel free to come up and, and um, ask ask away. Um, we're also happy to 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 set up meetings if you if you would like to uh, if you would like any more information from us. So um, I'm just going to um, ask our organizers to to have to for some closing remarks. I'm going to start with um, with ITC from Anna for some closing remarks. Um, well, thank you, everyone. I think in conscious of time, uh, on behalf of ITC, we'd like to thank you and also thank the, the great collaboration with the UNCTAD Biotrade Initiative. Um, regarding uh, the self-assessment tool, uh, as already mentioned by Lika, we remain available to uh, yeah, clarify any questions and also set up any kind of uh, sessions um, uh, that are customized to your country and your needs. So um, I think that's uh, brief enough, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to pass the floor now over to our organizer. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And thank you, Lika. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, and uh, really, uh, thank you all uh, for joining and staying with us um, for this event. I hope, uh, as Lika mentioned, that the information that we provided to you was useful. We are here to, to support and to have any meeting that you wish. And um, I really, um, we really like to see how we can work further together and support the mainstreaming of trade, both the, uh, the positive side of trade into the global biodiversity framework. And um, we'll be uploading all the information in the link. And um, really my heartfelt thanks to all of you in the room and online for the interest in taking part in the discussions and to our donor SECO who, who has been supporting us throughout the years and, and the work that you have seen is mainly through their contribution. So thank you very much. Have a great day, uh, a great day ahead. So the meeting's closed, thank you.